Lecture 10, part one on soil water unsaturated zone hydrology. Using the soil moisture characteristics for sand and clay, we can establish the volumetric moisture contents above the water table for hydrostatic equilibrium. That is no vertical water flow in sand and clay. The left figure shows the potential diagram above the water table and the right figure the corresponding moisture contents above the water table for sand and clay. As there is no water flow, the matrix potential is linearly related to the elevation above the water table. At an elevation of 20 centimeters, the matrix potential equals minus 20 centimeter. At an elevation of 40 centimeter above the water table, the matrix potential equals minus 40 centimeter, etc. And from the soil moisture characteristics for sand and clay, the corresponding volumetric moisture contents are established. As there is no vertical water flow, it may first and again be evident that the water here does not flow in the direction of a lower moisture content or more negative matrix potential. Same as that groundwater does not per definition flow in the direction of a lower pressure head. Secondly, at the same matrix potential, a clay soil contains more water than a sand soil. Thirdly, the air entry suction is again clearly visible at the right hand side of the soil moisture curve for a sand soil, as is the sudden drop in moisture content for this sand soil at an elevation in between 20 and 40 centimeter above the water table. This, as we have seen before, is because predominant pores in the sand lose their water at these matrix potentials of minus 20 to minus 40 centimeter. Note that just above the water table, there is a small zone where the volumetric moisture content is at a maximum, meaning that all pores are water saturated. This is caused by pores sucking up water by capillary action from the zero pressure groundwater level below, a phenomenon known as capillary rise. Because of this, just above the water table, pores are saturated, even though the matrix potential is smaller than zero. This zone, where water is sucked up from the water table by capillary forces, is called the capillary zone or capillary fringe. Because of the different pore sizes that exist in a soil, only the base of the capillary fringe is completely water saturated. The existence of the capillary fringe is related to the air entry suction, a critical suction for air to enter a soil pore as introduced before. When for a certain pore, the air entry suction is larger than the existing matrix suction, or likewise, when the air entry matrix potential is more negative than the existing matrix potential, air will not enter and the sucked up water will not drain from this pore. At the top of the saturated part of the capillary fringe, the soil's matrix suction thus is equal to the air entry suction of the largest prevailing pore size just above the water table. We may now extend hydrostatic equilibrium, no water flow, to water flow through a porous medium experiencing friction. In the soil water zone or unsaturated zone, this water flow is unsaturated water flow. Water flow through a porous soil medium where pores are usually filled with a mixture of water and air. As with groundwater flow, the water flow is in the direction of the lower mechanical energy. Thus, for unsaturated water flow, water flow is in the direction of the more negative total potential. With this total potential H, following Bernoulli's law, being made up of the gravitational potential Z and matrix potential Psi. The hydraulic conductivity is strongly dependent on moisture content. The drier the soil, the smaller the conductivity, because water is bound stronger 
water flow experiences more resistance, the water film along the soil particles is interrupted. To quantify unsaturated water flow, we need to introduce a proportionality factor to account for differences in soil material, soil texture, and properties of the water, same as before for groundwater flow. This proportionality factor is the unsaturated hydraulic conductivity, which is the unsaturated zone equivalent of the saturated hydraulic conductivity, K, that we know from Darcy's law. When some of the pores are in part filled with air, the unsaturated hydraulic conductivity is lower than the saturated hydraulic conductivity. The hydraulic conductivity is highest at saturation. It then is the saturated hydraulic conductivity. Values of the hydraulic conductivity in the unsaturated zone are therefore usually given in centimeter per day or smaller units. With unsaturated flow, the hydraulic conductivity is a function of the matrix potential psi or volumetric moisture content theta, and therefore written in notation as k as a function of psi or k as a function of theta. This figure shows the unsaturated hydraulic conductivity on the vertical axis as a function of the matrix potential on the horizontal axis for a sand and clay soil. The curves show a declining unsaturated hydraulic conductivity with a more negative matrix potential for these two types of soil. The vertical axis with the unsaturated hydraulic conductivity is a logarithmic axis. The increments shown differ by a factor 10 or regarded slightly differently for the increments shown, the exponents or powers of 10 differ linearly along the vertical axis. The matrix potential is given along a linear horizontal axis. A matrix potential of zero centimeter indicates water saturation. Thus, the intersections of the curves with the vertical axis give the saturated hydraulic conductivities of sand and clay in centimeter per day. We already know that the saturated hydraulic conductivity is larger for sand than clay. In sand, there is a rapid decline in hydraulic conductivity with only a slight increase in suction or more negative matrix potential. This has to do with sand losing water from larger predominant pores. Clay has a larger variety of pore sizes. When, for the examples shown here, the matrix potential becomes more negative than minus 52 centimeter, the unsaturated hydraulic conductivity becomes larger for clay than sand. In accordance with this, the American physicist Edgar Buckingham extended Darcy's law for groundwater flow to an equation for unsaturated water flow conditions, the Darcy-Buckingham equation. For vertical unsaturated water flow, this equation may be written as Qz is the volume flux density or specific discharge in the vertical z direction in centimeter per day equals minus k. K is the unsaturated hydraulic conductivity also in centimeter per day, presented here as a function of the matrix potential psi, and then times dH dz. dH dz is the hydraulic gradient with the total potential H being equal to the sum of the gravitational potential z and the matrix potential psi. The Darcy-Buckingham equation can be combined with the continuity equation for unsaturated flow to deliver the highly nonlinear partial differential equation known as the Richards equation after the American soil physicist Lorenzo A. Richards. The equation is presented here for the vertical z direction. Pages 165 and 166 and mathematical toolboxes 8 and 9, M8 and M9, in my book, provide more information. The Richards equation, whether for determining the infiltration rate, percolation rate or evaporation rate, all of these being volume flux densities, 
cannot be solved easily by hand. This is because both the unsaturated hydraulic conductivity K as a function of psi and the total potential H at the left hand side of the equation, as well as the volumetric moisture content theta at the right hand side of the equation, are related to each other. This calls for some cumbersome trial and error problem solving. The Richards equation can be written or rewritten in different forms. See M9 in my book. Numerical methods are needed to solve these forms of the Richards equation, each method having distinct advantages and disadvantages. A well-known public domain software package for the analysis of water flow and solute transport in the unsaturated zone is Hydrus 1D, and for professional purposes there is Hydrus 2D, 3D. This figure shows an example of a potential diagram of upward flow in the upper 40 cm of a soil profile due to evaporation. The reference level is set at the level of the water table in order for easy comparison with the earlier introduced potential diagrams for hydrostatic equilibrium. Evaporation constitutes an upward water loss from the land surface to the atmosphere, the upper soil to become drier, and thus for the matrix potential at the land surface to become more negative. Because of this, the total potential at the land surface being the sum of the gravitational potential Z and the matrix potential psi also decreases at the land surface and water flows in the direction of the lower total potential trying to satisfy the atmospheric demand. From the potential diagram we observe upward flow due to evaporation in the upper 40 cm of the profile and hydrostatic equilibrium, no vertical water flow below this. Both by capillary rise and evaporation, water is transported upward in the direction of the soil surface. With upward water flow, salts contained in the water are also transported upward. This may cause salts to accumulate in the upper soil and at the land surface, a phenomenon especially prominent in dry climates. If no countermeasures are taken, accumulated salts may be harmful to the growth of plants and crops. Countermeasures may comprise combined irrigation and drainage of the soil to flush out excess salts. Knowledge of infiltration is important when studying land degradation processes both at the surface and below. At the surface, erosion may occur due to the detachment of soil particles by rainfall and overland flow when not all rain infiltrates. Below the surface, Processes such as mass movement can be triggered by high groundwater levels. Groundwater levels are linked to both infiltration and percolation. Analytical approximations have been developed for estimating ponded infiltration, that is, the changing infiltration rate with time from a water layer ponded at the soil surface. Thus, when the rainfall intensity in millimeter per hour exceeds the infiltration rate in millimeter per hour. For non-ponding infiltration, thus when no ponding occurs and all rain infiltrates, the non-ponding infiltration rate in millimeter per hour simply equals the rainfall intensity in millimeter per hour. To study ponded infiltration, use can be made of an infiltrometer in Dutch infiltrometer, preferably a double ring infiltrometer as shown here, and the Marriott bottle, as shown here. Water from a single ring infiltrometer does not only infiltrate vertically, but also slightly laterally. It is therefore better to use a double ring infiltrometer because this creates a water-filled area between the outer and inner ring, which causes water to infiltrate more vertically from the inner ring, which is the ring used for measuring the ponded infiltration rate. This figure shows the essence of an experimental setup to determine the ponded infiltration rate with time. The Mariotte bottle is named after French physicist Mariotte. The ending of the soft plastic tube 
between the bottle's water outlet and the inside infiltrometer ring should lie just above the soil surface, well below the intended surface water level in the ring, as no air should enter this plastic tube once the experiment starts. The experiment starts by filling the area within the rings with water to a level which is only slightly lower than the lower height of the bottle's air inlet pipe. For the inner ring, this can simply be done by slightly lifting the plastic cork that holds the air inlet pipe from the Marriott bottle. As soon as the bottle is opened at the top, water will start to flow into the inner ring. After the desired water level in the inner ring is reached, quickly replace the plastic cork with the air inlet pipe onto the bottle. The soft plastic tube between the bottle's water outlet and the infiltrometer ring now is filled with water. When, during the experiment, water flows from the Marriott bottle, air is taken in via the air inlet and the air bubbles up to the air in the closed top of the bottle. The air inlet, a hard plastic pipe, is dimensioned in such a way to let an air bubble pass easily. The bottom of the air inlet and the free water surface in the inner ring are at the same level because the water pressure equals zero at both positions. The principle of communicating vessels. When water infiltrates the soil, the water level in the inner infiltrometer ring slightly lowers, causing water to flow from the Marriott bottle into the inner ring until the water level in the inner ring again equals the lower height of the bottle's air inlet. In this way, a constant head water level is maintained within the inner ring. By keeping track of the water level in the Marriott bottle, one can determine the volume of water in milliliters or cubic centimeter that flows from the bottle for a chosen time step, for instance, per each minute. Dividing this water discharge, cubic centimeter per minute, by the area of the inner ring, square centimeters, delivers the infiltration rate F for each time step in centimeter per minute, which can be reworked to millimeter per hour. As an additional remark, the water between the outer and inner ring is kept at the same level as the water in the inner ring. Simply by pouring water from a handheld bottle into the outer ring, or by using yet another Marriott bottle for this. This figure shows the potential diagram, a diagram showing the different potentials or heads with soil depth for this experimental setup. The lens surface has been taken as reference level, and the ponded infiltration is caused by a water layer at the surface with constant head. H0. Note that ponded infiltration causes water saturation from the soil surface downward and thus positive water pressures in the upper part of the soil profile. Instead of using a double ring infiltrometer and Marriott bottle, one of a number of other ways to measure the ponded infiltration rate, be it indirectly, is by using a rainfall simulator. This figure shows a photo of a small portable rainfall simulator used by Earth Sciences students during their first year fieldwork in the French Alps. Rain is simulated by water dripping through small holes from a water container. The holes are positioned at regular spacing in a plastic plate at the bottom of the water container. By using a Marriott bottle, the simulated rain is made to fall on the field plot with a constant intensity. Full details are given on pages 182 to and including 184 of my book. The main idea is that once ponding at the field plot has started, the infiltration rate with time can be calculated from the difference between the constant rainfall intensity and the rate of runoff from the wetted field plot. To this end, the water flowing from the field plot is collected at regular time intervals and its volume measured in a measuring cylinder. 
using a rainfall simulator may be regarded as an improvement from using a double ring in filtrometer simply because the way in which rainfall is added to the soil is more natural. One of the disadvantages of a portable rainfall simulator as shown here, however, is that the altitude from which the raindrops fall is low and that the drops therefore do not reach their maximum fall velocity and full energetic impact on the soil surface as may real rain when there is no vegetation to shield the soil surface. This figure is a momentary view of the change in volumetric moisture content with soil depth during ponded infiltration. The Australian scientists Green and Amt developed a physical approximation model of ponded infiltration. Their key simplification is the assumption of a sharp wetting front. The initial volumetric moisture content in the soil, theta i, is taken as constant, and ponded infiltration evolves from a water layer with constant head h0. When we take the soil surface as reference level, z is zero, then the wetting front has reached a depth of z is l, with l having a negative value. Because the soil above the wetting front is water saturated and the soil below the front has its initial soil moisture content, there exists a high suction gradient at the wetting front. The matrix potential in the dry soil below the wetting front is represented by green and end as psi f, psi f being a negative number. Green and end applied both Bernoulli's law and Darcy's law as follows. The gravitational potential Z at the wetting front equals L. The matrix potential psi at the wetting front equals psi f. The total potential at the wetting front therefore equals L plus psi f. The elevation head or gravitational potential Z at the soil surface equals zero. The pressure head at the soil surface equals H zero. The total potential or hydraulic head H at the soil surface thus equals zero plus H zero is H zero. The porous medium offering resistance to the infiltrating water flow stretches from the soil surface to the wetting front. And the difference in hydraulic head equals the total potential at the water receiving end minus the hydraulic head at the water dispatching end, which is L plus Psi F, minus h0. The distance covered is defined as the location to where the water flows minus the location from where it dispatches. Thus L minus 0 is L. And the hydraulic gradient in Darcy's law for downward flow therefore equals L plus psi f minus h0 divided by L. Multiplying the hydraulic gradient with the saturated hydraulic conductivity K delivers the downward volume flux density Q as follows. The flow is downward, thus the volume flux density Q is a negative number. Psi F and L are also negative numbers. Students, Please do not learn this or an equivalent equation by heart, but make sure that you can derive the equation yourself by applying both Bernoulli's law and Darcy's law as just shown. In hydrological literature, the infiltration rate F and the distance from the surface to the wetting front L are often taken positive. The infiltration rate then is the positive value of the vertical volume flux density or vertical specific discharge. When we also replace the matrix potential at the wetting front psi f by the wetting front soil suction head sf, thus sf equals minus psi f, 
then this delivers the green and end equation for bonded infiltration as shown here. The green and empty equation for ponded infiltration applies particularly to infiltration into uniform, initially dry, coarse textured soils that exhibit a sharp wetting front. Although the green and empty equation is derived from a model, simplification of reality, it provides important insights into the infiltration process, which can be verified by infiltration experiments for instance, by using a double ring infiltrometer or rainfall simulator. First of all, from this equation, it is clear that as infiltration continues, T to infinity, L becomes larger and larger still, causing the hydraulic gradient and consequently the infiltration rate F to gradually decline during infiltration. Secondly, after quite some time has passed, L will be much larger than both SF and H0, and the hydraulic gradient indicated as lowercase i here will be reduced to a value of 1, causing the final infiltration rate to be equal to the saturated hydraulic conductivity K. This is called gravity drainage. This figure, after an infiltration experiment, shows the gradual decline with time of the infiltration rate during ponded infiltration. Note the scatter of the measurements. This is not abnormal for ponded infiltration experiments. This figure and its derivation can be found as an interactive spreadsheet on the online resource center or companion website of my book at Oxford University Press together with two other descriptions of the ponded infiltration process, those of Horton and Philip, that will be introduced in part two of this lecture. When ponded infiltration lasts long enough, the final infiltration rate will be equal to the saturated hydraulic conductivity, as shown here. 